Welcome to another video where I discuss the solutions to the in-class handouts. This handout from chapter 5, we're going to be discussing modern portfolio concepts. So one way that we can measure what we call the required rate of return, that's what this triple R stands for, required rate of return, is using the capital asset pricing model. This model uses, utilizes beta to help us calculate risk associated with stocks we, we may want to invest in. So hold on, let me just format this line here. I want to put a an accounting line here. Okay, so the first thing we have to look at is these variables. So the risk-free rate, RFR, this is the rate at which an investor could in, invest with no risk, like a treasury. So that's the starting point. Then we look at beta. And beta was discussed in the chapter. You could go back and read about beta. But beta is basically the volatility compared to the market. And this, anything greater than one means there's more volatility than the actual market. So then we have the average market return. So you can think of this as the average maybe for the S&P 500. But you would tailor it to the market your stock belongs to. And then again, I put the risk-free rate here again because it's in the formula. So we have, we look at, the, the risk-free required rate of return is going to be, we're going to add the risk-free rate to um, beta multiplied by the market return minus the risk-free rate. And remember your PIMDAS, um, the order of operations when you calculate this formula. So I set it up where mm -hmm. I am taking a C5, which is the risk-free rate. I'm going to add that to, and now I have it in outer brackets. Uh, I'm going to look at C7, which is the market return, 8% minus C8, the risk-free rate, and I'm going to multiply that by C6, which is the beta, and then add the 4% or C5, which is the required rate of return. So I just created, I took this formula and turned it into an Excel formula to calculate the required rate of return. So for this stock, we could call this um, stock A. Oops, stock A. And what's cool about Excel is I could take this, let me just make it beautiful for you, and I can drag to get this black cross here, and I can drag it across, and I was hoping it would change the, uh, maybe it only would work with numbers. Let's try this again. Stock one, two, and three. So you see that is pretty cool when you have it, something numbered, it automatically knows to increase the number. Okay, so let me just like it better like that. Okay. So so let me just copy this formula over to these other cells and we get, we see that of the three stocks, the stock two has the highest required rate of return. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it has a 2% beta and a 13% market return. Now, and in example three, it has a higher beta than example one and a higher market return, which if you look at the formula, is going to amplify your required rate of return. So if we look at the, the risks involved, which could be market return and beta, this gives us an idea of our required rate of return. So if we don't think these stocks could return these possible amounts in one year, we should not invest in them. Okay, so let's move down to the next example, which is portfolio return. So I have a portfolio of four stocks, and these are my investments in each stock. And I want to know what is my portfolio return. So portfolio return, this just means my average return in the portfolio. So some people might say, well, here are your returns. Just go and um, go to your formulas and insert an average. And there is your portfolio return. But that's not true because the portfolio has different amounts in each stock. So you can't, they're not, they're weighted differently. So we have to actually calculate a percentage of the investment. So here I've got the total investment. So if I want the total portfolio, I can again just go click on the sum and I get the sum of my investment here. And to get a percentage, I'm just going to take each investment and divide by the total. 
and I'm going to use my absolutes around uh, my sum so I can just easily just drag this down. Okay. We're going to actually calculate the return here. So to get our portfolio return, I'm going to have to multiply the percentage of the investment by the actual return. So I get a, um, a fraction and I can take these little pieces of return for each of the investments and I can sum them and then I get my average return for the portfolio. No. I'm sorry, this is the average return for the portfolio but this is the weighted average return of the portfolio. So this is the 12.3 is not correct. The weighted average return of 12.9% is correct. So I use these percentages of investments as my weights. I multiplied it by the rates of return over here and then found the sum of those rates of return to get my portfolio total. And that's how you get a portfolio return if you needed to calculate that for yourself. Okay, so let's just do that again. Uh, and what we do here is I'm going to take the uh, sum of the total. So I'm going to take, uh, well, I mean, oops, what do I want to do first? Ignore that. I'll just show you how to sum. Just go to your auto sum and click sum. So I'm going to sum all my investments. And then to get a percentage of that investment, I take the investment and divide it by the total portfolio. And it gives me, so $2,500 is 15.6% of 16 thousand dollars so again here to make things a little simpler i'm going to put an absolute here because i don't want that cell to change and so i can easily just drag this down and i have my and you can see that 5500 is the highest percentage so these are 5500 is 34.4 percent of my total portfolio so these are the weights and these are the rates of return so to get the portfolio return i have to multiply my weights times my rates and it gives me a fraction of the return when when i sum these um, returns up i get my portfolio return okay now let's switch over to beta so beta is a measure of risk and volatility of your stock compared to the stock market. So here we have four betas and beta could be, you know, it could be any number. It could be a negative five, negative 500, 500, but most of 80% of all betas are between um, somewhere between 0.25 and two. Okay. So here are the stock prices and the market return. So this is the stock market return. And these are all different examples. So the new stock price. So what we're going to say is that if the stock price is $25, the market return is 10%. And we're going to say that our stock is going to be, uh, we're going to use beta to reflect the actual stock price change of our stock. Okay, so I put a formula in here where, um, let me just simplify this by saying it's a beta of two first. So a beta of two means that our stock is gonna have twice the return of the stock market. So if the stock market returns 10%, our beta, our stock's gonna return 20%. Just like down here, if the stock market return is 35% and I have a beta of one, our return will be straight up 35%. So to get this, to get this factor, I'm gonna take the stock market return of 10% and multiply it by the beta to get the percentage return that my stock is going to have, since it has a beta of two, it, it return is twice the market. So what is a 20% return on $25? So 25% of $25 is $5. So if I'm getting a $5 return, I'd expect a new stock price of $30. So if we look at the formula, what I did to calculate this was I took um, C26, the 10%, I multiplied by A26, the two, that gives me 20%, and then I'm going to multiply that by my stock price of $25, which gives me the $5. So basically 20% times 25 gives me $5. Then I'm going to add back my stock, B26, to my $5 to get $30. And that's how this formula works up here. So if it was back to the 2.25 beta, 
we'd expect this price to go up because now beta is higher. I'm gonna have, my stock's gonna have a higher return because it magnifies the returns of the market. So again, if I was gonna do stock two, I would take the market return, multiply it by the beta to get the return for this stock, and then multiply that by the stock to actually calculate my return. And that just, this, this formula here, C27 times A27 times B27, gives me the actual return of the stock. But I have to add this to the starting point of the stock to get my new stock price. You know. So uh, you could also think of it this way. If I added a column here, and I could just call this column beta, uh, no, call this column, uh, let's just say a dollar return. And then I could, calculate the market return times the beta times the stock price. This is the actual return that I'm receiving. So the new stock price could be the old stock price plus the return. And that's how I get that $30. So this is just another way of uh, looking at it is you could actually calculate the, how much return you're going to get and then add it to the previous stock price. To get the new stock price but I'm just taking it uh, one step I'm just cutting out that step and just stating what the new stock price is okay so that's how you would calculate the new stock price using the beta so uh, here a beta of one is you know simply going to be you know even though I use that same formula you know since it's beta one, I'm just getting a 35% return. So I could do the same uh, and cut out actually one step here, but I'm just gonna leave it in. Okay, so moving on to, uh, let's look at calculating the beta, the average beta of a portfolio. Again, we're gonna follow that same steps we did earlier, where I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna have to calculate my weights. So I'm gonna take the stock A and divide it by the total portfolio to get a percentage that stock A is of my portfolio. So here, let's bring this down. I have to put absolutes here, otherwise it's gonna drift that cell. So these dollar signs are absolutes and it locks in. It's gonna lock this cell in for me. So I could just drift this down. So here are my percentages and all these together are gonna to equal one. So the sum of these is 100% or just one. Now I'm gonna multiply my weights times my betas to get my fractional betas and then I'm just gonna find the sum of these betas to give you my portfolio, my average, um, this would be my portfolio beta. Okay, so if I wanted sort of a weighted average Portfolio beta, I spelled portfolio wrong. This would be my weighted average portfolio beta. And I'll just highlight it in the color so it looks, you can easily tell. Okay, so this would be my portfolio beta. It's a weighted average of my betas, my portfolio, not, you know, if I was just to take these four cells and find the average of it, it would be more like uh, 1.7, but really the weighted beta is 1.73. So similar to the previous example up here, when we found the stock portfolio average, the portfolio average, weighted average return, here we're just finding the portfolio a weighted beta. Okay, so here are just some basic modern portfolio concepts that's talked about in the chapter that I wanted to go over and reinforce in this handout. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you next video.